And so Dundee United are a mere 180 minutes away from what would be a, a marvellous achievement in Scottish football, the league championship. But the theme this week for them all has been relaxation. They all went to a golf outing on Monday at Glen Eagles where I'm told they were thoroughly soaked. However, they have recovered and Jim McLean was telling me before they came on, he doesn't see any sign of any great tension there. Now, as goals count in the championship, there's a man, Ralph Milne, who's only three away from his 50th goal for the club. He scored an excellent goal last week and the last time we were here as well, a very valuable man to have. And Mother will have achieved their prime objective this year of staying in the Premier Division. And Mr Wallace admits that he is now gutting the club out, in a sense, getting rid of a lot of players so that he can start fresh next season. And one of the promising young players is, of course, Brian McClare, who got into the headlines, of course. Look at that, for example. Great skill. He'll be in Mexico showing that off there this summer. Who got into the newspapers by scoring a hat-trick against both Rangers and Celtic in the same week. That's not a bad achievement. And the referee with Johan Edmondson there is David Syme, who hopes the game today is going to be as placid as the Olympic qualifying match he refereed in Denmark on Wednesday night when nothing was exchanged between players other than pleasantries. Shuggy, otherwise known as uh, Johan Edmondson, starting off and obviously playing up front today. And I suppose that's Mr Wallace throwing the gauntlet down to Jim McLennan saying we're going to have a go. Should be a fine game of football knowing what is at stake for United and the challenge that Motherwell will throw. Starak taken up by Milne. Billy Kirkwood well underneath that. There's Billy Kirkwood straight replacement today for Richard Goff who's suspended but who'll be back again next week well Eamon Bannon right in the middle of the field there nice touch inside Rafferty put it forward nicely but a very weak ending Kirkwood, a bit of pushing there by Flavel. Free kick. Starrock. Couldn't get it down cleanly to Kirkwood. Holt is very wide. Yes, Starrock with a turn and Bill comes in behind him. United supporters like that move, fairly typical, almost conventional United move with Paul Sturrock, the fulcrum of it, pushing it back to the oncoming player, hitting it cleanly. Awkward header there by Bannon, I think Gamalpus was probably better placed than, than Bannon was. Good running by Gornin done with a better cross he gets another bite at it and Billy Kirkwood's there United under pressure Stunnock on his own throw to Motherwell Paul Stunnock in a, a lone roll up the front at the moment here's Gagan oh, the awkward one there by David Dodds As a commander, shouting the odds. And this phase of the game is clearly going to Motherwell. Halfway through the first half, and they are quite simply in command. Well, cutely enough left there by David Nenny, but I, I think he probably thought it was to get to the goal line. Off the back. Forbes is there though. Now the referee doesn't like that attendance and I think he's going to warn Scott. And explain exactly 
did what he could get away with. Russell has gone for that. Push there. Rafferty right behind Bannon. Rafferty, who is uh, one of the players, very strong mis midfield players, missed only three league games. So, both Bannon and Mill, poised to take it. It's Bannon is there. Secure a free kick better than that. 27 minutes gone, and that's an absolute gem. That could conceivably be the best free kick I've seen in a long time. Judged to perfection. It had pace, power, accuracy, and counted. One nothing. like that back again Gay again can't get it away Malthus and now David Dodds Nitty yes Sturrock Ralph Bell goes through and that is a oh, almost an on goal well, the sheer pace of this man almost terrorized the defender he wasn't quite sure what was going to happen he just stuck the leg in to try and get it away as Milne accelerated. Here's Bannon. Yeah, pushing by Gagan. Bannon had got right up. It's likely that Damon Bannon will take this free kick, but uh, yeah, he might try to call it. And that's very narrowly on the wrong side of the post. That's a corner kick, by the way. Player got the contact. Banner with it. Very powerful one indeed. Stark. On the corner. Well, he drove that. Holt. Now Milne likes his position, that's a good ball. Watch Higgerty. Bannon. Billy Kirkwood. Higgerty finding himself in the outside left position. Now Bannon. Got a brilliant turning by Sterling. That would have been a superb goal had it gone in. Well, that's the best of Sterling. Sudden quick turning, drive across, a header just over. Off the line by Dornan. United certainly have turned on the screw now. An entirely different performance. Brought about a new complexion to this game. Stutter. That's a one-two round ball. Tries a chip. Just underneath it, and the United. Very, very unfortunate. Only to be one goal up at this stage. In three great opportunities. But one has to say that the direct intervention of Motherwell defenders have deprived them. Good turning by Dodds. Gives it away though. There's no onside. There's a great chance for McClare. Oh! He can hardly believe it. Well, here's the proof. Look at it. I mean, the bouncing ball that could have lost slightly. But he really did have the opportunity to calm himself down and get a bit of control instead of lashing out the way he did. 
cut well by Kirkwood. Free kick. Ah. Ah. Buzz of expectancy in the crowd. Free kick in exactly the same position, almost exactly as when Bannon scored that spectacular goal. And we have 15 seconds to go till David Simon there blows the whistle for half time. Not a bad way to finish this half. Well, could he achieve a replica? I think he's going to have a go, you know. No, Neri changed it. And it all peters out. But in fact, perhaps an idea. And uh, particularly Eamon Bannon might have been better advised to have a go at the goal with so little of the play left. But there it is. United really should be three or four goals up at this stage. They have to content themselves with one goal. And what a goal to content yourself with. A spectacular free kick. Deadly in its accuracy and execution. And that obviously boosted the morale of the team who had been looking decidedly stodgy up until that goal came. And the one thing that United cannot now afford to do is go off the boil, as they did in the game when we were last year, as they played Kilmarnock in the second half. That would be a tremendous waste for them. Well, I think the only threat at the moment to the game itself is the mist, which is beginning to roll down the pitch from right to left in no immediate danger but uh, it's getting a bit ominous away to the right that's the end that Dundee United are now attacking and where the supporters have rested themselves down and there's Billy Kirkwood good snappy opening to this half Hegarty there again. Foul pass. Dodds took his eye right off it. And fouling. Sweeping, rather handsome move there by United. David Dodds will go for it again. Stutter trying to ease his way in and he threw himself. Say, putting up very stout resistance. But certainly not all blood and thunder with uh, Motherwell today, playing with a degree of intelligence in the way they've marshaled themselves, broken away. Penalty kick given this time. Well, well. It's almost as if the last one were a rehearsal. And he has been troubling the Motherwell defence and his back to goal in the penalty area. He's very elusive. And when he turns and the tackle's late, and the penalty's inevitable, there was no dive about that. So we have the penalty kick, and Eamon Bannon, with virtually nine minutes of the second half gone, and the chance of scoring the second goal. Off we go. Away. I think there was a slight deliberate check in the way that Bannon addressed himself to the ball and wrong footing Walker very easily and his second goal. That's a better ball and a very good one as Gagan picks it up. Nice little chip gift to Hamis McCarthy.
David Dodds, almost a clearing header. Free kick. And once or twice, players have kicked the ball away like that, rather stupid way. So, David Syme quite entitled to book Bobby Flavel. You know, you sometimes you despair at the things that are needlessly done that cause penalties to the team. And Dodge is just over. One, two, then maybe Sturrock realised that Dodge was coming in behind him, getting that back header up, but it was just a bit too looped by Dodge. Bannon, decent header. Bannon on his run again, back goes Gagan with him. That's a corner. That's about all he could get there, because Bannon had closed him down. Surely no. Brilliantly saved by Nicky Walker. He's had 14 Premier appearances since he made his debut against Celtic in January. And that's about as good a save he's made in all that time. No, I think uh, over eager the pair of them there, Stark and Hegarty. And the afternoon is definitely at its mistiest now. Swirling right across, right to left. And that slides away. Shot there by McAllister. Dogs. Totally underneath it. Just getting over the line before Sturrock. Oh, that could be picked up by Mill, this could be disaster. There's David Dodds, he's done it. As simple as you like. And that was given away by Bonneville. I mean, it's really suicidal to play like that against the sharpness of the United forward line. And so with uh, almost 28 minutes of the second half gone, that third goal there, rather unselfishly put forward to David Dodds, who immaculately, immaculately coolly toended it away. 3 0. Blatant obstruction. And Tommy O'Hara is a very nippy. I don't know what that was all about. Holt Stunner Ron has got it back and now they're beginning to get uh, the same kind of pace as I've seen them at the best in so many games brilliantly struck there Stark and a push by Stunner well controlled just slightly unfortunate almost taking the crossbar away Malpas. Young fullback making a very good run of that. There's David Dodds. And Malpas had come inside him again. It's the first time that Malpas has made a really attacking move like that in the game, and it paid dividends. And he released the ball, it was done with intelligence. And although David Dodds did shoot, Malthus was actually coming, coming up inside for a return ball. Side of the foot. Dornan, I offer it. 
Nine minutes remaining. It's been a good, entertaining game. What uh, I think has impressed me is the game that Mono will have made of it. Stalak is there and falls. <laughs> There you are, you saw how he never gave up. Ed Bolton. That stop. That's a good ball now. David Nelly. Superbly inside. Oh, too, too obvious by Ralph Milne. Hegarty. seen so much of Edwilson in the second half Andy Dornan Gagan Holt watches it Flavel Dodds this could be a fine break Stunnock gets it Bannon is moving there's Bannon there's Holt in the middle, and Milne and Dodds has scored. That's number four. What a typical United breakaway. That superb probing ball to Sturrock's feet. The layoff to Bannon. And not just Bannon's run, but all the players coming up, all of them within scoring range, potentially. And although Mill let it go, with a fine touch there, it was Dodds, handy, pushing it over. Well, minus that first 25 minutes, that was a splendidly disciplined professional performance by United, who chose patience and caution as a basis of the performance rather than the charge of the light brigade. Although if the Lancers could have struck as lethally as United did occasionally, they might have survived. Now, in case anybody thinks United are on the brink of a championship win by default or taking advantage of other slips, look at their statistics. They've played a total of 54 games in all competitions this season and they've lost only seven. They scored 125 goals and conceded only 46 and have broken the Premier League record with 88 goals. Facts are chills at Wenneding. They've carved out the position themselves. There haven't been too many favours about of course, they've still got to go to Dens next week, and nobody is going to lie down to them there. It is a tantalising situation for United, reminiscent of a cup final in many ways, so uh, just try jamming yourself in at Dens next week. One man who couldn't be jammed out yesterday was Eamon Bannon, who, as you saw, hit as spectacular a free kick as I've ever seen. I asked him if the team had derived satisfaction from the performance as well as the win. Yes, we did, actually. It was great to get that game under our belt with a good win. And the Celtic dropping the two goals, that gives us a little bit of leeway against them. So all in all, it was a great result. But you're still not there? No, we're still not there, no. A victory next week at Dens, I think, is what we must be going for. We can't really assume that we can get anything less and win the title, but uh, we'll just try our best. Now, did you find this game awkward to play? Because it was a case of being only 180 minutes away from the championship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had to play Mother. Well, people assumed they were going to beat them. That's right, yeah. Everybody was talking about the Dundee game and the big derby match next week. And it was very difficult putting this game at the back of your mind and saying, well, we've just got to win it. I think that showed the first half hour. I think Motherwell played very well and didn't really let us get into the game at all. No. Well, you got into the game with a bag. Now, that free kick you took, how often do you practice these kicks? Well, I don't practice them very often at all. Um, Walter Smith was going to buy a, a wall which We'd act as a dummy men, we'd stand in the wall. A wall, a, ca a cardboard wall. Yeah, 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 a cardboard wall, which we could practice our free kicks round. But uh, he never managed to get it. So I said to him today that I might score more goals like that if he manages to get it for next what, season. If you can hit the ball like that, they'll need granite. <laughs> now, the, the, the penalty you took, I thought that you sort of checked halfway through your stride you yeah. know, to, to wrong foot the goalkeeper. Was that deliberate <clears> or was it a misrun, if you like? No, it was deliberate. Uh, actually, but uh, I'm not giving any away any of my secrets <laughs> until after next week. <laughs> it was deliberate, though. Yeah, right. Now, David Dodds is a great and valuable asset for the team in, in picking up uh, little bits, you know, half chances and so on. Right. And he did that very well with the two goals. Yes, he did, yes. Uh, the third goal... Well, it's almost a gift, the third goal. Yes, it was, yeah, the one that felt him. But the second goal in particular, where he 
he hustled the, the back four, Ralph and Paul Sturrock and himself, and he managed to win the ball and he stuck it away well. W would you say that that fourth goal was very, very typical of Dundee United, the way the build-up, you know, that long ball to Paul Sturrock in, in the first place? Mm -hmm. Fairly typical of him. Yes, it was very typical of Dundee United, the way they played that. Got now, the defence. In all honesty, you know, managers, players, they all say, well, we're not feeling tense, it's, it's not getting through to us. But are you? I mean, here you are, Dundee United, are almost about to win the championship, still to win it, but mm. is it not getting through to you all that? Yes, I would, I would be lying if I said it, it wasn't a very tense situation. Ever since we beat Celtic at Parkhead, I think everybody's had the butterflies in their stomach at some stage. And now that we have won this penultimate game, we've now got to go to Dens next week, and I think the, the nerves will be pretty ragged in, until next Saturday. But once we're out on the pitch next Saturday, they'll disappear, I hope. <laughs>